Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another 3016 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at John J. Rambo based off his appearance in Rambo First Blood. 3-0 had my attention with their incredible Rambo 3 figure. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what they have in store for us for Rambo 1. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans as well as a points based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button for more info on Justin's Collection Plus, the channel membership. As for the box art, I think it looks really good. We've got an image of Sly as Rambo front and center done in this soft 80s movie poster style aesthetic. Down below, Rambo in a metallic red finish. Then a quote on the side that says, they drew first blood, not me. On the side, an image of an M16. On the back, a product shot of the figure himself, plus another quote that says, you dominate the town, I'm the king in the mountains. Plus, of course, all of the warnings and legal info. Now you can flip open the front cover to get a sneak preview of the figure in sight. But we're not here for sneak previews, we're here to bust him out of the packaging. I was really impressed with their Rambo 3 figure. I think that that honestly might be their best figure to date. This one, I'm hoping, follows that trend. First in-hand impressions are that this guy feels quite similar to the Rambo 3 one, and that's not really a bad thing. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Normally at this point I'd be saying starting off with the display base first, but in this instance unfortunately he doesn't have one. I don't exactly know why, but 3-0 continues to not give us display bases with their 1-6 scale figures. Please, Going forward, 3-0, consider giving us bases. Now you do get a bunch of these bullet belts. They are done in this rubbery style plastic. They're nicely sculpted and very well painted. I can't imagine it was easy to paint every single bullet and every single tip in this nice copper color. They're suitably metallic and they are molded to go in certain positions on his body. And you also get one for the M60. Don't worry, we'll be exploring all of this a little bit later. Seeing as though I just mentioned it, let's talk about his M60. This is one BFG, but I love it. You've got the real fabric sling, it's all made of plastic, but the sculpt is crisp and clean. The paint applications are stunning. It's done in gunmetal, there's this kind of oil stain wash on the surface, as well as a bunch of silver dry brushing. Now up front you do have a bipod, but unfortunately it is fixed in position. But you do have a real working handle, the iron sights can move forward and back, and you've got a proper loading lever on the side and you can pop open the top cover, remove this piece, slide in those rubbery bullet belts, which of course, once again, you will be seeing a little bit later. You do get his M16 and this is also very well done. It's painted in the same way as the M60 with that kind of slick oil stain look to the surface as well as the dry brushing, plus a fabric sling and you do have a proper opening bullet ejection port and much to my surprise you can pull this top piece back as well. I absolutely wasn't expecting that, that piece is tiny, but it just goes to show that 3-0 have some crazy 1-6 scale engineering skills. You can also remove the magazine which isn't super easy to do as it locks in position, but when you do, you do have some painted bullet detail up top. Just like the Sly Stallone Shop version, we get his hunting knife, and this thing is huge. It's also rather prickly, so do be careful not to spike yourself. One side is nicely serrated, it's done in this shiny silver metallic, with some pitting on the surface. Now this time you do have the accurate string, which was missing from the Sly Stallone Shop version, and you still have the compass, which is really tiny and it pops off just a little bit easier than that other one. To go along with the hunting knife so Rambo can fashion a spear, you do get this massive stick, and even though it's sculpted out of plastic, it actually looks like a real stick. It's well sculpted, it's well painted, 
and up top you have this section that you slide the knife into. Now it doesn't work quite the way I was expecting. I thought you would just slide it in, but actually you remove the compass, you then slide the knife in up top, then you push the compass back in position to lock everything in place. Lastly, you do get a full array of hands, ranging from closed fists to open palm hands to trigger fingers, and these also look really good. The paint applications are on point, you've got some vein work and some skin texture. Plus, 3-0 decided to do something kinda crazy, but I love it. They included a bunch of spare wrist pegs, which in and of itself isn't really all that crazy. But they fully painted every single wrist peg with the same skin texture as the hands themselves. Now they do look a little bit darker, but trust me, once they're on the figure, they do make a world of difference. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. This guy looks really good. I was hoping he was going to, but you know, with 3-0, they can be a little bit hit and miss when it comes to human head sculpts. But this time, they delivered the goods. Rambo 3 was exceptional. This guy borrows the body, so it looks all in proportion, it's well sculpted, it's well painted. But it does feel kind of lightweight, a lot lighter than I was initially expecting. It feels light, but also high quality at the same time. You'll know what I'm talking about when you get this guy in hand. The outfit hugs the body in all the right places, and it's accurate, it's also very well weathered. Up close and personal, starting off with the head sculpt first, it's really good. The likeness to a young Sly is absolutely there, the skin texture is really well painted, you've got the five o'clock shadow, the blood trickle running down his cheek that actually looks like real wet blood, plus I love the intensity to the expression, he's looking up ever so slightly. You also get a real fabric brown bandana that extends up underneath his fringe. And his hair is fully sculpted, but there's a ton of detail here. You can make out all the strands, it's well painted, not just in black, but there is some brown dry brushing as well. Now compared to the Rambo 3 head sculpt, I still think the one on the right is my favourite. But do weigh in down below, which head sculpt do you prefer? I'm fairly certain that this is a unique sculpt for the new one, I don't think it's a shared sculpt, just with a different hairpiece, they look quite different. You can also tell that the skin tone is a lot darker, he was more tanned in Rambo 3. Now comparing it to the Rambo First Blood figure from Sly Stallone Shop, this one on the right is a little bit bigger. I like them both. But honestly, if I did have to pick my favourite, at this point, I'm probably going with 3-0. His upper torso is done in the same way as Rambo 3, meaning it is fully seamless, although it is covered by this absolutely filthy tank top. It's dirty, it's grimy, it's really well weathered. Around the back, you can see a couple of scars painted in, and the skin tone match between the head sculpt and the neck is perfect. Honestly, that couldn't have been easy to accomplish, because they are made of completely different materials. The arms are also fully seamless, and once again, I love the way they look. Now, some people did complain about the way they're pegged in up the top for the shoulder, but I think that's a good thing. That means you can articulate the arms independently of the upper torso, and you don't have to worry about creasing, because this is a separate piece. The skin texture is well done. You've got some bruising, and this time they didn't forget they included the cut on the bicep. Now, it's not actually sculpted there, it's just printed on the surface, but the blood actually looks wet and glossy. One other complaint that people had was when you bend the elbows, the material does like to buckle. Yes, it can look a little bit unsightly, but let's be honest, if you're bending these arms constantly, you have a lot more to worry about than just buckling. They could crease, they could crack, and the paint applications on the surface could start to flake off. So please, when you're moving them, be careful. Now, it's not really a huge deal, but it is something that kind of bugs me just a little. His wrist pegs are massive. I don't know why they don't sit up further inside the rubber. They did paint them with some skin tone paint applications to try and blend them. But as you can see, 
they're still pretty obvious. This version of Rambo does have multiple different looks. Don't worry, we are getting to the poncho. I'm pretty curious to see that myself. But I think in my display, I'm going to have him wearing all the bullet belts. Which looks like this, and his badass factor is slowly but surely starting to rise. I love the way this looks. Now, his outfit was pretty darn simple before, but now there is a lot more to look at. It just adds a ton of visual interest. Now, the instructions do outline how you put these on and in which order to do so because certain belts overlap and they are specifically molded to either go around his pecs or down here his belt area. Plus they are a rubbery style plastic so they shouldn't really get in the way when it comes to articulation. If you are wondering what he looks like with the poncho on though, while this isn't my favourite look, I personally prefer the bullet belts. A lot of people like this, and I can see why. It's something different, it's definitely going to stand out in the display, it's very movie and scene specific. I like the colour, it's a nice deep rich brown, you've got tattered edges all the way around, a bunch of holes and a ton of weathering. This thing is absolutely soiled. Now to attach it to him you simply slide it over the top, cinch it around his waist and tie it in position with this wire. Now it's not the easiest thing in the world to accomplish, but once again the instructions do a perfect job of explaining how to get this done. Now that we're back to standard Rambo, we can talk about his jeans and belt. The belt itself is made of black pleather, nothing special, you've got a real metal belt buckle, and a sheath for his combat knife that's done in brown pleather. You do have this padded pocket around the front, although it isn't functional. It is strapped to his thigh with this brown string, which is also weathered just like the knee area of the pants themselves. Now the jeans do start off a much lighter blue denim, but as you get towards the boots they get absolutely filthy. Weathering was quite clearly a focus here, and in my opinion 3-0 nailed it. The jeans are nice and wrinkled, there's multiple layers of shading, it's not just brown or sand coloured, they've coupled them together to make it look even more realistic. Coming down to the boots, you might be thinking like me, oh no, this looks like one fixed solid hunk, we're not going to have any articulation whatsoever. But 3-0 have actually solved that issue. They've made this out of a really soft material, and as you can see, you get a really decent range of motion, and the joints actually hold in position. The boots themselves are nicely sculpted and textured, with wrinkles and some leather grain on the surface, plus some tread fully sculpted in underneath. If I had one complaint though, it would be that the pants, quite clearly, as we've discussed, are filthy but the boots themselves do look a little clean. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Rambo 3 alongside Rambo 1, both by 3-0. As you can see, the new guy is a little bit taller. I don't exactly know why, they're using the same body, the same style and size of neck connector, which leads me to believe it could be either the ankle extenders or the boots themselves. Is it a huge issue? For me, no, not really, but it is something to be aware of. Also, the skin tone between both figures is dramatically different. In Rambo 1, he was just his normal pale self, whereas in Rambo 3, he was running around in Afghanistan. He was a lot more tan, which is accurate to the movie. Even though he is taller than Rambo 3, he's still shorter than the Sly Stallone shop version, which... I know, is going to bother a lot of you. That was one of the biggest complaints, was that the sliced loan shop one was far too tall. I'm now seeing that, yeah, it is potentially a little bit too tall, but it is made by Sly himself, and it's made by a completely different company. So a little bit of variance in the height is, in my mind, to be expected. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a fixed rubbery neck with a double ball peg. 
looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there on very clicky ratchets. They will go forward and back, plus a butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Double bend at the elbow that also incorporates a swivel, plus a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso does crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs do go forward to there, although it's really fighting me. They do go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee that does get you just past 90. And then a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Wrapping up on 3-0's first blood, John J. Rambo. Going into this, super excited. I love their Rambo 3 figure, he is incredible. But this guy delivers on those high expectations no problem whatsoever. The head sculpt is really good. It's another one of 3-0's best of all time. The likeness is there. The skin tone paint applications, awesome. This, in my opinion, rivals some modern day Hot Toys figures. Now the body is well proportioned, it's the same body as we saw with Rambo 3, so I automatically really like it. The articulation is good, yet do bear in mind it is seamless, so be careful not to crack or crease that rubbery material. The outfit has multiple different interchangeable options with the bullet belts or the poncho, so the sky's the limit in terms of your creativity with what you want to do with this figure in your display. When it comes to accessories, he also has it in the bag. He's got multiple weapons, you can use the knife in the spear or in the holster just as his knife, and they've included wrist pegs for almost every single hand. A nice touch and something I hope to see from them going forward. The only complaint is that he doesn't come with a display base. 3-0, please, going forward, give us bases. Your figures are getting better and better, but when you don't give us a base, it kind of cheapens the overall quality feel. With that being said, though, do I still recommend him? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This might just be the best 1-6 scale Rambo figure right up there alongside their previously released Rambo 3. It's all down to which look and which movie you prefer. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button for more info on Justin's Collection Plus. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews, like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.